Uh, I think I can start a little bit. Um, me, Gary, and uh, Yori, you know, like we went in June uh, to do the, the Spanish River, and it was very interesting. We are waiting, for, we are expecting for a different river, and we figured out two so days before we go into water levels was already in August levels, and the most interesting i was talking with the, the 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 conservation guys the spanish river guys and they told us they were doing the trip one week before and though the river was very low it means we are already counting a little bit but we're not expecting to see the river the way it was that's why i'm going to share a little bit the 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 history of our trip i don't know if you guys know the spanish river in general the spanish river it's in north of sudbury I'm going to make a small screen. Okay, I hope you guys can see my screen now. Uh, Gary, can you guys see my screen? Yep, we can. So oh, okay. Good. Okay, as I said, uh, the Spanish River runs the north of Sudbury. This is Sudbury. There's a train station, and there's another one on Cartier Station. And this, in general, this is the the Spanish River. We decide to take the train in Cartier just because it's easier to manage all the, the shuttles, even the parking and the, the, the night before to stay. Um, the second one, when you start looking for the Spanish River, uh, I'm going to make another. We decide not to use the shuttle just to save some money and it was easier for us to save time. Uh, this is where we stay the first night, Windy Lake Motel. There's as well uh, 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 a camp, a campground right beside. But just is it's easier for us to manage if we, on the motel. We don't need to pack and clean all the gear. We decide to leave one car at the elbow, and the, the night before we left, we just run, oh sorry, the morning before we left, we did this road, and we leave one car park it. It's a good place to leave a car. The road is not the best. I think we need a four by four or like a Honda RV with some some ground clearance at least because everything is great. But when you get to the last two kilometers, it gets a little bit rough. But we saw one car there, a normal car, but everything was fine. Um, and then on the on on the next day we drove to Cartier Station where we took the train, and one car was already at the end, uh, waiting for us when we finished the river. Um, our our main point, our stop was at the Bisco, or Bisco Bisco Tazing. It's a small village up north. In general, it's like in general, it's the starting point here. And this is the Cartier train station. It means we took the train, took more or less one hour and a half, two hours, and we lived, we live on the Biscotesi. When we get to Biscotesi, there's a, a small general store and was already almost lunchtime and we decide to paddle more or less 10K and we sleep on the, on the island pretty clean and we get some extra time and we, we get there early around 4 or 5 and it was easy for us. Uh, it's an open, it's a open, more or less open, like there's a lot of boats and traffic. Uh, the weather was pretty good. We're trying to figure out a lot, we're trying to figure out if there was a, a portage trying to cross to the Biscotes in them. We're trying to figure out if there was a small portage we can run, but we checked, but that was really in bad shape. It was not clear and we give up. We just run through everything around. So far, all the levels on, on, the, on the lake, everything was okay until we get to Biscotes in Dam. Everything changed on the river. After we crossed the dam, everything started dropping a lot, all the water levels. And, and it was very clear we, we must be around three foot, uh, like more or less 36 inch below the normal levels. In general, we try to pile always 20, 25 K a day. And, and we keep always the same distance, even with the water was very, very low. 
was a, sometimes was a, a pretty big push, but since I was okay. <clears throat> All the campgrounds are very clean. We don't have any problems. I just want to give you a note, very important. If you guys want to planning to do the, the Spanish River and take the train, you guys need to reserve the, the, the train for your canoe. When you guys call the Via Rail or the Sudbury train station, you guys need to reserve because they need to prepare the car just to make sure they have space for the boats. Inside the train, they told us almost all the long weekends on summer, everything is full. Plus, you need to bring $50 cash with you inside the train to pay the boat. When you do the reservations online on the phone, they don't accept the, the key new money for some reason. And when you get inside the car, the guy came to you and you pay $50 cash. Yeah, just remember to call V-Rail and say, I need to reserve a canoe space for the Spanish River. But in general, it all, all the long weekends, uh, everything is already full booked. Uh, there's a, a, an outfitter, there's two outfitters on, on the Spanish River, Fox Lodge. When we stay on the Windy Lake Motel, we call the guys and say if they can take all the permits, I'm going to give a print screen. This is the Fox Lodge Outfitter. It's a small campground. Uh, and they they drop all the permits on the Windy Lake Motel. Permits for five days, we pay around, we pay $260 for four persons, five days, and they charge more $50 to leave the permits on the Windy Lake Motel, as a reference for you guys. It's about Agnew, $9 a day. And it, yeah. uh, the, the drive from Fox to Windy's 45 minutes on a country road. So we can understand of gas slash an hour and a half of the guy's time. Yes. Made sense. Well, it was, yeah, it was very acceptable, divide by four. We understand because it was really far. There is another one. There is another outfitter, Agnew Lake Lodge. And this is the Windy Lake Motel. And this is the, sorry, Agnew Lake Lodge. Agnew Lake Lodge outfitters, they are not doing shuttles this year because they don't have insurance. And plus, uh, I think they rent boats from the university from Sudbury and they are not about nothing in so far they're going to hold for the campground and for the lodge. They are not doing any rentals. Uh, I'm going to share as well. I'm going to show some photos from the weekends, from the, the five days. Uh, in general, this was the, the water levels. This was the, the, all the campsites were pretty good, very clean, very open, no flies. We have really minimum flies. Um, just, I think just because the, the month before was very cold, we are very lucky. Plus we are very lucky with the weather. Yeah, this is the general, you, yeah, we, you're going to see the water levels was very low in general. Uh, we scrap a lot. Uh, we we took relic boats because Kevlar boats was almost impossible. We scrap from top to bottom almost all the rapids we need to line. Uh, this was the campgrounds. The view was very open and beautiful campsites. And we have the train, all the campsites. Uh, and then when we get to the, to the rapids, we start lining almost everything. I think I only portaged one rapid because I think it was a lot of, involved a lot of technical lining. And I think Gary, they, oh, and I think we found a lot of boats along the river and we did a really good cleanup. We took yoke straps from all the boats we found along the river. If you guys go now, you are too late. We already took most of all the gear. <laughs> yeah, this was an Evergreen Star bus was, almost new, all the boats we found was almost new and we took all the straps and all the gear was pos as possible. We were salvaging. Yeah, we salvaged very clean. <laughs> that was another boat, uh, was in very good shape. Unfortunately, <laughs> we, can't, we can't took with us, was almost new boat. I think with just a couple of dollars and we have a new canoe. It was not cracked anything. 
Well, some of the screws on the seats that were gone, they were done, they were almost a 360 degree bend. So it was yeah. carnage for sure. Yeah, for sure. So we it's came across a pack first and then we came across that boat with the bench. Yeah. That's called a bench shaft paddle, by the way. <laughs> um, most of the wrap is the class two, class three. We need to line because the the water was so low and it was yeah. not, even was not safe to run. And I don't know if you noticed, but there's a nice sticker on this boat. Yes, there's a nice sticker. I hope you guys have the sticker. There's the new WCA sticker we sent on our Mustagan magazine. Oh, there's a sticker. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, yeah, there is a sticker on on the barrel. And the campsites in general, they are very good, very clean. Everything, the uh, firebox, everything was in very good shape. We, we also did not see anybody all week, right? Yeah. Yes, we don't see anyone. And then when we, yeah, when we get to the rapids, the the water was so low, we need to line everything. This was a class two, class two, a long rapid. We are expecting a long, uh, a good volume, and at the end we need to line everything. Yeah, it was a combination. If there was enough water to float, we were doing a pinball, and then at some point there's just too many rocks. You've got to, you know, yeah. it's too long to go through the rocks. So you have to lift over or mm -hmm. something. Yeah, I have a good lesson learning, uh, lining rapid. Lining, yeah. yeah. Don't step on wet rocks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the Biscotesi Dam. And then we start piling all the, all the campsite was very clean. We don't have any problems. And again, when we get to the rapids, we scrap all the wraps. So on some wraps we try to run, but we just get stuck right away. And you know, just slowly push the boat and try back and forward and it was okay. But in general, as you can see on the rocks on the picture, the water was like really below, like 30 inch below the, the normal levels. Um, yeah, and that's as you can see, all the ledge, you see all exposed ledge. And so always, we have very good flow. And of course, we have a good breakfast and dinners in our group and coffee, really nice coffee. And that's our typical doing water purification with the gravity filter, uh, pizza for dinner. food and in general we always place a tarp but we in, in general we never like rain and was but at least create some shades it was a very hot day and that's where so this is where you leave the train in biscotes and there's a small uh, store or where they sell alcohol and just medium stuff there was one oh, and plus fee. you need to pay three dollars for each pole yeah, there was a fee yes. of three bucks to launch the boat on this official dock. Um, launch, it's kind of like private property almost everywhere, except yeah. the rail line you could probably launch from. It's, you know, for three bucks, we figured yeah. it's not worth the hassle. I so think it was fair. Yeah, it was fair, and we tried to help. Yeah, we tried to help the locals. We feel it was fair. Yeah, that's the start in this cottage. When, the, when you leave the, the train, is, you're right beside on this store. And this was during the day, during the train. Uh, so far it was okay. And, but then we get somewhere and say, oh, this looks very low. And yeah. all These the campsites are in was really, reverse. really nice. And this was, <laughs> yeah. And then there's that guy with the orange vest. He came to us and say, well, uh, you guys need to reserve your boat, your kidney, because we call, one week before we called VRA to reserve the the seats and the canoes, and they told us you guys don't need to reserve uh, because it's always uh, enough space. And that guy from with the orange race told us the opposite. No, you guys need to reserve your canoe. Plus, you guys need to pay fifty dollars for the canoe inside the train. We are okay, but we we didn't we try 
to talk with the guy and say, no, we call the view rate and they say no, and you are seeing the opposite. It was a little bit back and forth, but we know, we learn and next time we need to call view rail or Sudbury train station say, uh, we need a, a space for our canoes. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff uh, to carry to the body car. It was a lot of busy uh, line doing the way, just a lot of uh, fish camps. And that's one of our boats. And this is Cartier train station when you leave your cars park it and you take the train. That's why we like to start on Cartier, just it's easier to manage compared like with Sudbury. And there's an LCBO store right beside as well, just at the end of the road. Uh, this is our, yeah, we have a picnic table in some campsites. Uh, yeah, uh, as you can see, Gary was very happy with the cooler. <laughs> and we have our train station, we leave our cars park it. And carry again all the boats inside. And there's the train. And I think that's all. That's all. Like that's another boat. Well, that's the another boat we found. Wow. Yeah, that's the the yellow one. The this yellow boat they have a waterproof bag with a Tim Hortons tent. I think might something else. The waterproof bag was really good. It was really brand new. If you guys need a canoe, I think we have the coordinates where they are. Look. Okay. Well, the canoe is a little wrecked. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. But you can the get. Evergreen, yeah, you can fix and still run the river. Yeah, the evergreen was. Yeah, the evergreen wrecked, was. Uh, which was brand yeah. new, but it's orange and it was wrecked. This yellow one was kind of like a plastic boat. Yeah, the evergreen was definitely wrecked. Um, the, the yellow one yeah. was kind of wrecked, but it, it was a cheaper boat. And then we saw pieces of boat, right? It was a green boat, I think. Yeah. We had a, yeah. We had a, it it a green boat and something else of a different boat. So there was equivalent about four boats on the river. Yeah. That we could see. We took but a lot really of got mangled. Oh, I mean, there was no seats left and all the screws were 180 degrees. 270, 360. Yeah. Really went through something. Yeah. But in general, it was a very relaxed trip. We tried always to keep around 25, 20 kilometers a day, still giving some time to get early to the campsites around four, uh, prepare all the tents, all the food. But it was, it was a really bit sad to see the river so low. I presume since we went with the last rain we had in Ontario. I think the water level must be a little bit higher now, a little bit more normal. Uh, but just be careful if you're going, maybe just call the, the Ontario parks on the Spanish river and just check with them. Yeah, there's no water uh, gauge yeah, on the river, for our... so you can't really look at a water gauge and compare it. Um, so the only thing yeah. Talk to the locals. Yeah. yeah, when we left the train, every well, we we start talking with a lot of people and say, "Oh, we're going to run the Spanish." Everyone is looking at us like, "Are you guys crazy?" There is no water <laughs> on this river. Everyone was saying, "Just okay." There is some. You know, when we took the train, he said, "Yeah, we can see it was very low," and unfortunately, only the last, the the last, the last day was really a fun day. It was. When we get to the elbow, I think this last, let me see, all these last two kilometers, I think two or three kilometers, and it was a really fun, like a small rolling course. It was flow a little bit, it was nice. We finished the, the trip in a really nice rapids, so like swifts, more swifts. It was a very continuous swifts, so was at least we finished in a good way. And then we have already one car park it and help a little bit just to get everything done and ready to go to another trip. Yeah, I think that's it from my side. I know it's a very small 
uh, trip report, but at least I want to share with you guys what we did. And someone it's, wants to go for the Spanish River. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess my. I don't know if you guys have any questions. The, yeah, my opinion is from the dam down to maybe Suckers Creek, you're going to be underwhelmed because it's basically, it needs more water. So about half the rapids, we were just bobbling through like pinballs. And then at some point in the rapid, you'd have to get out on the rock and line or, or lift over and then pinball again. So it was, you know, disappointing. From Sucker so, yeah. down, I would say you could probably pinball all the way to about the forks. And then the forks start turning into more of a gravel bar swifts, you know? So they're like class mm -hmm. half swifts and each rapid, you're going to hit the bottom somewhere, but you kind of float over because it's all little, you know, this size rocks and stuff. Uh, and even in the high water, it's like a one and a half, you know, class river. Yeah. So in low water, it's the same thing. You're just maneuvering more. You're looking for, yeah. if it starts braiding, you're looking for where is the water going? Um, you know, no, Terry, yeah, you now we can do it. Uh, where are you starting from? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure because I'm just riding along, right? I, I just said, hey, it's a river. I'll take it. Yeah. So so I'm not sure exactly. I know we're doing the west side because okay. I've got a 17-foot uh, Royal X boat that doesn't like portages. Yeah. So, um, but I'm not sure where we're starting from, but I'm just hoping that some of this rain... And yeah, it's filled my pool was left up there, so yeah, yeah I think it does it's look cross. pretty bony to me. On yeah, those pictures. very. Yeah. Don't I've only done it twice, kidding. and once it was really good water a couple years ago, and and I only went from the forks to the elbow. It was excellent, class uh -huh. half two stuff, and now I've done it this time. It's still one and a half, you know, ish kind of stuff. But at the top, you know, we couldn't even run the raft. There's just boulders, you know. So you just yeah. around 10, 20 meters and okay. <laughs> or and you get first rapid we walked was kind of a lift over. And then every rapid from there on, we kind of pinballed at what we could and then get out of the boat and walk, you know, line it a bit. Um, I'm just wondering for water level, do you talk to the conservation guy? It would be a great insight. What about Fox Lake uh, trailer park? Would they know? Uh, I tried, but they they don't check the river for some yeah, reason. Yeah, they don't check it. Eh? Okay. They don't check. Okay. Yeah. So I guess it's a conservation guy, and maybe yeah. that number and name in the chat, um, Sandro, um, and that way when we do the video, it will be in the chat. You know, the last five ten seconds of the video. Yeah. Um, you know, or email name telephone number whatever you have because unfortunately there's no water gauge on this river mm -hmm. so did yeah. it back in 2018 i can't look at anything there's there's no gauge within 50 miles of the river you know yeah um is there a dam at agnew agnew lake there no bisco tasing but there's no gauge online yeah but what about down at the agnew at the bottom I have no idea. I don't. Yeah. I I've done that river before, and I don't recall a gauge. Yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I looked about two months ago, and I couldn't find any gauge. You know, mm -hmm. current yeah. gauge. Um, maybe there's a historic gauge, but it's you know, it's not valid. Yeah, I think the best way is just call the conservation Ponta yeah. Parks for the Spanish River. Right. Yeah, they said We're, it was August levels, and we did it in mid. Yeah, he told me it was oh. August right away. He told me I just paddled. He told me I just paddled the Spanish top to bottom, and I scraped from top to bottom as well, <laughs> and and it was wa August water levels. I was mm -hmm. oh okay, and when we took the train, and oh my god, yes. Yeah, the train goes beside the river for maybe 10k so you can kind of get an idea at, at that point it's you know runnable i mean you're just gonna bomb mm. a swift yeah you know, class one and a half ish kind of yeah Bis move yeah. around a little bit not much biscotte into the yeah 
Bisco takes into the dam, you know, it's you anyway have a real export, a heavy one. It takes time mm -hmm. to get to the dam. Yeah, wow. I mean, on the lake, yeah. Yeah, that's got water. Yeah, the lake, yeah. It's uh, Just... after the dam, yeah, it looks a little bit more fun. But you know, Spanish River, it's a very wide river and it's a lot of flat sections as well. Yeah, it's not like the launch of the mono. Yeah. But we, in general, we try, we keep always 20, 25, sorry, the minimum was 23 and we went almost 25 and 27 K a day. Yeah. And but, it was you know, okay. Not stressful or anything. No, we stopped for yeah. food and we, there's one day we just finished very early. I think it was two or 3 PM. We finished yeah. very early. Yeah, give some time to rest. Now, Terry, have you ever gone to Agnew? Like elbow to Agnew? I, I, yeah, that's that's the trip I did. But but the Agnew section, we had the taxi come and get us. Okay. So the water taxi yeah. came. Okay, I see. Yeah. So on the lake, you got a water taxi, okay. Yeah, it, it's just figuring <laughs> yeah, out, like if you, yeah, if you go to, like once you go past the elbow, there's two or three rapids. And then there's 40k a flat to mm. add to lodge or whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Issue is trying to get back to where your cars are, which could we be parked, uh, we parked at uh, Agnew Lake Lodge, had them to the shuttle, and then we paddled right back to Agnew Lake Lodge. You did, yeah. eh? Did you start on the east branch or west branch? The the wh whatever branch you did, it wasn't that one. Okay, so the east oh, branch so is a series of lakes. And yeah, you're right on the on road, right? Yeah, they start to number like lake five, lake four, yeah, lake ten, three, lake two. right? So you're starting a bunch at of lake ten, lakes. going to lake one or something. Exactly, mm. that's what we did. It's easier because yes, you can park a car at either end, and the shuttle is uh, well, an hour or so on the road. Yeah, I think we paid hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, they gave us a driver, dropped us off at the top, and then they parked our car at the bottom. Okay, yeah, that's good. We didn't have to go and get a car. Yeah. And now between all those lakes, like is there rapids or just portages or how is it? Like... Um, no portages, just uh, mostly swifts. swifts. I don't remember okay. any. Okay. I don't remember doing any portages the whole river. Okay. And uh, well, what time of year was that, Fred? That would have been July, I think. Oh, okay. The yeah, water was sure. not too bad. It was higher. I know people had done it the year before. I think Gary James had done it the year before, and it was very low, but we had pretty good water. Yeah. yeah in 2018, if you go on the WCA YouTube, there's some videos from my trip, and the river was like totally full of water. And yeah, it was we had ice. You can go anywhere. You could pick any yeah, line yeah. on it. You had all these options. Uh, what we are telling yeah. was we kept saying, where's the water? Because <laughs> if it started to <laughs> say, oh, let's go left. And then you'd go along, it was great. And all of a sudden, uh oh, <laughs> it would fan somewhere and another braid and you lose the water. So it was challenging. <laughs> and it, it reminded me of like a Yukon River where somebody's on the right braid. Yeah, we found water everywhere. And you know, you're running out of water basically. Yeah. Well, was a good lesson learned with the Spanish river and lining for me was good. <laughs> yeah, we did a lot of lining. <laughs> lining a lot. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, uh, I think from my side, it's everything. Okay. Thanks very much, Sandro.